Let's so compile the design question. We have been given a C code, and in that, we are assuming a structure which has been allocated from the heap. It contains two fields F1 and F2. And that is the reason why we are having this Y referencing F1 and Y referencing F2 as the dereferencing operations because that is the dynamic memory allocated from the heap and we are dereferencing it. So that is a pointer dereferencing. And we are having the local variables X, Y, Z, P, Q, I. They are stored in the registers. And we are applying the common sub expression elimination CAC optimization technique on this code. So in the resulting code after the optimization, what will be the number of addition and the dereference operations which we just discussed will be present respectively has to be determined. So in this particular code, we can see there is a for loop which is running up to from zero up to 200, but it is getting incremented by two every time. So in effect, it will run just for 100 times. And inside that loop, we are having these addition, addition plus dereferencing, addition plus dereferencing and two addition, those operations are present inside it. But right now, as we can see, there is a lot of redundancy in this. We can optimize this code to result into something like, we can say T1 equal to, let us have a look at this initializer statement. In this, we can say T1 is Y referencing F1. So here every time when we see this Y referencing F1, we can simply replace it with this T1. And this value is not getting manipulated further in the code. So if we calculate it just for once and store it, then it can be used multiple times without again requiring us to do the dereference operation. And then in the same way, we can store this Y referencing F2 and that can be used in this place. Similarly, we can see this X plus three is also redundant code. It can be seen at these two places. So we can further store that in a variable. So now our variable Z will become T3 in place of this X plus three. Then here it will be T1. And at the last it will be replaced with T2. So this is this line one we have modified and now entering into the loop, it will be for i equal to zero, i less than 200, i plus equal to two. Now inside this loop, we will be going either into the if part or into the else part, depending upon which one gets satisfied. When we go into the if part, then what we'll be doing is P equal to P plus X plus three, which means T three and Q equal to Q plus Y referencing F one means T one. Either these two operations will be performed or in the else part, we'll be performing P equal to P plus Y referencing F two, which means T two and Q equal to Q plus T three. This is what our optimized code will look like. Now in this code, we can see what is the number of dereference operations? One, two. Is there any other dereference operation we can see? No, inside the loop we have not used any. So there are only two dereference operations left in our optimized code. In the same way, now let us calculate the number of addition operations. Here we can see one, two, three. Outside the loop, we got three. Now let us move inside the loop. Now in this loop, as we just discussed, either the if part will be executed or the else part will be executed at a time. If the if part gets executed, then we are having one and two two addition operations. If we go to the else part, then again one and two. So in every iteration of the loop, we will be performing only two addition operations. And the loop is running for 100 times and we are performing 
the addition operation two times each so that becomes 200 but now as you can see over here this i plus equal to 2 the value of i is being incremented after each iteration and this is also an addition operation to be counted now the loop is running for 100 times hence this particular operation will also take place 100 times these both will also take place 100 times any one of them at a time but collectively both of them will be 100 times so what is the resulting number of addition operations we got we have got 100 for this and then these two combinedly will run for 100 times at a time any one of them will run so in total from this we will be getting 200 operations from here we got 100 so in total we have 300 plus outside the loop we got 1 2 and 3 so 300 plus 3 so 303 addition and 2 dereferencing this is the number of operations we will be having in the optimized code once again let us have a look how did we get 300 100 for this increment operation and 100 times any one of these two conditions will run either the if part or the else part let us say 50 times if is satisfied and remaining 50 times else is satisfied which means 50 times we will be performing these two operations and remaining 50 times we will be performing these two operations so whatever is the distribution as a result we are going to get 100 times two operations which is 200 operations from this so this 100 plus 200 from this if else gave us 300 and there are three outside the loop so 303 hence our correct answer for this question is d